Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss how to access and use the preference menu within Easy Builder Pro to help customize your experience. Let's begin by opening an instance of Easy Builder Pro. Within my application, you'll notice I've created a few objects. These objects will be used to demonstrate some of the features that we'll modify within our preference menu. To access our preference menu, we'll need to select the File button in the top left-hand corner. Towards the bottom, you'll find our Preference button, and we'll select this button to open our Preference menu. In the Project tab of our Preference menu, we can enable the following options. We can select to automatically save and compile the project when we perform a download or run a simulation. Without this enabled, we will need to manually save the project by selecting File and then Save, and then select the Project tab to compile the project. And only after this process is complete can we perform a download or simulate our project. Performing this process automatically can save a huge amount of time during project development. Just below this setting, you'll notice that currently our project is configured to generate a backup of the project before saving over your current copy. What this does is create a file with an extension marked .bak. There are several programs that create BAK files, and if you've never used one, it might not be clear why these files are useful. To demonstrate how these files are used, Let's first make a minor modification to our project. I'm going to add just a basic static image object, and then I'll click our Save button. Looking within the folder that our file was saved, you'll find a new BAK file. To use this file, we'll first rename it, and I'll call this Original Project and I'll change the extension to CMTP. Now, our backup file is a working application file that we can open using Easy Builder Pro. And upon opening this project file, we'll find our original project as it existed prior to our save. The next feature I'd like to demonstrate will force Easy Builder Pro to automatically move images from an imported library into the project tab during project development. Without this option selected, you'll find that if you transfer this project to another computer, and this computer doesn't have the required library files, you will not have access to the images used within this library. However, as you might know, images stored within your project library are saved within the project file, meaning that these images will be accessible on another device. To demonstrate this, I'm going to create a new object. I'll select a bit lamp for this example, and I'll select the Shape tab, and then click the Picture Library button. Now this feature does not work with the default system images displayed within the Library tab. So I'll select the Browse Libraries button, and click a new library, and add it into my project. Since this is not a system library, if we select an image and add it to our project by using it within an object, then this image will be saved within our project library. We'll reopen our Preference menu and take a look at the last option within our Project tab, which will automatically save auto recovery information in case the application is closed abnormally. And with that covered, we'll open our Display tab and take a look at some of the settings that determine how our application is presented. On top, 
you'll notice the Objects section. This section will allow you to configure how an object's description is displayed. The description on an object can be enabled either within the Preference menu here or within the View tab. The description itself can display up to three properties. The object ID, which is an acronym associated with the object's type. Our set word, for example, displays the acronym SW. The display object address checkbox will allow our description to display all addresses associated with a specific object. And the last setting within this section will allow your description to display an object's label tag. A label tag is a tag created within our label library. It is used by an object to display a dynamic text value. Underneath all these options, we can configure the font's attribute, which includes font size, text color, background color, if background is enabled, and also define how many addresses a description can display. Within the window section, we have a setting to display common window objects on base windows. The common window is a window that is effective on each base window within your project. By correlation, each object placed on a common window will also display within each base window in your project. So it may be useful to enable this so that the objects on your common window don't overlap those on the base window. Just underneath this setting, we can also enable an option to display objects used on underlay windows on your base window. An underlay window is a window that is assigned to lay under a current window. These windows are typically used as a project background or menu, and they act as an extra common window. Next, we can configure if comment objects should be displayed while working on your project. A comment object is a different form of a static text object. Comment objects are not shown on the HMI's display when the project is downloaded. They are used by the project developer to explain their work or make important notes that they can refer to in the future. When Highlight Selected Object in Window Tree is enabled, selecting an object on any specific page will expand the contents of that particular window. And lastly, we have our ribbon control. Within each tab in EasyBuilder Pro, certain setting selections are often grouped together and separated by a thin gray vertical column. Each group is associated with a different title. If we enable this function, these titles will be visible, which can make finding a particular feature a lot easier. With our display section covered, we'll move on to our grid section. The grid section is fairly quick to cover. Within this tab, we can add a dotted grid to our background by configuring the grid properties and enabling the display checkbox. Next to our display checkbox, we can also enable snap placement. This can help you align objects within your grid by allowing them to essentially snap into place. And on the far right, a developer can fix all objects in place meaning that if you try to change the position or size of an existing object, these changes will be ignored, unless these changes are configured directly within an Object Properties menu, or if you disable Fix All Objects within the Preference menu. Below the grid settings, you'll find a separate section for guides. Guides can be created once the ruler function within our view tab is enabled. A guide is used to organize and align the objects on screen. To create a guide, simply double click on the ruler while building your application. And within our preference menu, a guide's color and style can be configured at the developer's discretion. Last but not least, we have our library tab where within this tab we can configure the delimiter used during CSV export to either a comma or semicolon. 
we can also specify an alternative path for picture libraries, which will allow you to access libraries found within a specified path from our Browse Library tool. Although this function is mainly used to define an alternative path if a shape or picture library already used within your project cannot be found. With that covered, I hope you've learned a lot from this lesson on our preference settings. And as always, if you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.